I'm starting a new video series with this video about the algorithm called uh, Deep Dream. And in this video, we're going to cover the basic theory be behind the algorithm. And in the next one, we'll go through the code I just open sourced a couple of days ago. As you can see it here on the screen, and it will give you some really psychedelic looking uh, imagery. Uh, but that's not the, the point, obviously, of, of this uh, of this series. Uh, it's going to teach you, you're going to learn a lot of more about deep learning itself, about like... Uh, computational graphs in PyTorch, uh, and also how to create some really nice artwork using uh, the, uh, this, this code. But first, let's jump to some basic theory about the Deep Dream algorithm itself. So what's the idea behind this algorithm? So given an input image, the, the thing that happens is that the neural network uh, see pre-trained on some like classification task or something like on ImageNet or MIT Places uh, 365, uh, basically sees some, something in that image, certain features. And whatever the network sees, we just uh, tell it to just amplify those exact features. And by doing that, you get the image on the right that you can see on the screen. I found the story how it all started really interesting. So Mort Vincev, the guy uh, that actually uh, created the Deep Dream algorithm, the initial uh, idea, uh, actually woke up like around 2 a.m. and had a nightmare. He just uh, sat down at his computer, coded this up in maybe 15 minutes, and instantaneously he got some really interesting results. Uh, what's even more uncommon maybe is that they did not publish a paper on this, they just wrote the blog, and subsequently they open sourced uh, a simple implementation of the Deep Dream algorithm. And you can see on the screen, they started getting some really weird creatures and results uh, titled like pig snail or the dogfish. It just sparked a lot of imagination from the very beginning. And those creatures came from this uh, cloud image you can see in the top left. And also the, the, the interesting thing is that depending on what you give to the network, what you input as the, as the, as the input, uh, for example, if you, if you give it some scene, it will start populating it with some towers or uh, buildings. And if you give it some kind of uh, maybe a leaf or something, it will start populating it with insects and animals. So it also depends on the, on the uh, data that the uh, network itself was trained on, not only on the input image. But I'll get into a bit more details a bit later. But Deep Dream was not uh, only about like creating this psychedelic, crazy looking images. Uh, it was actually a part of the effort to better understand neural networks, uh, a field called uh, interpretability of neural networks. And uh, you can see in the in the bottom left uh, the, those examples. So uh, what they actually told the network was, hey, uh, tell me what do you see, what do you, what do you think dumbbell is? And going in reverse and reconstructing the image, uh, they got these four images in the bottom left. And you can see that the network actually learned to um, always expect to see some muscular hands of a weightlifter uh, next to the dumbbell or a bodybuilder or whatever, and did not manage to actually extract the concept itself of a dumbbell, how we humans actually think about the dumbbell itself as an independent object, not dependent on the context where we usually see it in. Let's get a bit deeper into how the thing actually works. So what you do, you have a pre-trained neural network, as I already said, uh, pre-trained on some classification data set like ImageNet or MIT Places 365. And you pass in the input image and you feed it through to a certain layer. And when you come to a certain layer, whatever activations you have there, you want to amplify them. And you do that by doing a gradient ascent and not descent. If, for example, you took a simple L2 or MSC loss on those activations, and you wanted to do a classical procedure that's a minimization, uh, what you would end up with would be the that the input image would either become black or more probably just some random noise image. On the other hand, if you tell it to maximize instead of minimize uh, those activations, you get the deep dream results that we're familiar with as the image on the right here. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, depending on which exact layer in the network you're trying to optimize, maximize in this case, uh, you get different interesting results. So if you take some shallower layers uh, from like some of the first layers in the neural network and you try and do this uh, procedure I just described, you'll get this low level uh, patterns 
really interesting patterns and colors, edges and corners, the stuff that we know, the usual low level uh, vision um, stuff. But on the other hand, if you took uh, some deeper layer in the network, you would start getting some more increasingly complex features uh, such as like maybe animal eyes or snout or something. Uh, I'm assuming of course here that the network was trained on ImageNet, which contained a lot of uh, like images of dogs and cats and animals in general. But if we had some other data set, then those uh, high level features would be some other things and not eyes or snouts. Now I already mentioned uh, ImageNet and MIT Places 365, but those are not the only data sets out there, obviously. You can use some other ones, but uh, just that I use these two. And these two are really common uh, in the Deep Dream uh, community. So you can see on the left here, uh, the image was produced by a network that was trained on um, a lot of imagery that contained animals. On the right, you can see uh, the network that was trained on the MIT places, which contains some scenery, human built objects, uh, pubs, cafes, and stuff like that. And that's the reason it has these uh, human-like built uh, things uh, ingrained into the image itself. Going a bit more deeper into the uh, theory, uh, so I already mentioned gradient ascent. So basically the only difference is you just uh, change the sign. Uh, when you do the update for a single pixel, you don't do the minus where you use the learning rate and the, uh, the gradients, you just uh, switch it to plus. Uh, but there are also some more advanced stuff like uh, image pyramids. So the uh, the idea there is, so first, what's, what's image pyramid? So it's basically you have your, your base image and you just uh, downsample it by some uh, ratio, let's say 1.5, and then you do it again and again and again, and you just stack those images and that's the image pyramid. So now, why do we do that? Now, the thing is, there is something called receptive field of the network. And when you uh, feed all of those images from the image pyramid with different sizes to the network, you will see different features in all of them. Some will be more fine grain, some will be like coarser features. And combining all of those across the layers, you'll get a really nice looking deep dream image. So why that work is that uh, when you have a smaller image in the input, uh, a single neuron somewhere in some deeper layer will be able to cover most of the pixels in that input image. And it will be able to manipulate and tweak those pixels. Uh, whereas when you have bigger image, uh, that pixel will only can, will only be able to change and modify just a small area of the input image. So the algorithm proceeds like this. Uh, you just start with the smallest resolution, you do the deep dream, then you just upsample the image, then again you do the deep dream, and then again again until you get to the base image of the pyramid, the biggest resolution, and you just stop. Uh, there are two more important things that you need to implement in order to have some nice images. Uh, one is uh, the gradient smoothing and normalization. So basically, if you only took uh, gradients that you get from this optimization and just uh, blindly applied them, the image will quickly explode uh, out of the, the bounds that we are keeping it in. So what you have to do is to just uh, treat the gradients as a, as, a, as a simple image and take a Gaussian kernel and just uh, filter out the uh, through the image, your convolution with the with the with the kernel, and that will just smoothen out the gradients. And additionally, you just want to uh, take the maybe standard deviation of the of the whole thing and just uh, uh, scale all of those uh, uh, gradients with that standard deviation, and that will just keep the things uh, uh, scoped. Aside from that, it's quite uh, usual to see to to just uh, after applying the gradient ascent step, you just want to clip the image so that you keep it in the a designated boundary that you want to keep it in. And those are usually ImageNet normalized boundaries. That should be enough for you to understand the next coding video where we'll uh, go st step through the code and just try and run this ourselves and get some really awesome looking uh, images. Yeah, and by the way, don't forget to check out the description where I've linked the uh, GitHub code. Uh, feel free to just play around with it before uh, I create the actual video of explaining how to use it. I guess most of you are coders or experienced machine learning engineers already, so go ahead and play. And as always, if you found this video useful, uh, and only if you found it useful, uh, please consider subscribing uh, and sharing the video. Uh, that would mean a lot to me. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.